Hello, it's Diane here. Um, I want to show you how to make my mug rug that I designed. Um, quite a few people don't know how to do them and think that they're quite difficult when in fact they're really easy, great fun to make and they make really nice little gifts. Um, so what I've done is I designed a basic mug rug with a satin stitch edging and a nice little wavy line and you can either keep the fabrics the same or you can applique them I've set it up so you've got uh, the, the placement line and the tack down line. So you can do an applique a piece of fabric if you want to, which is what I do. Um, now I want to show you, this is my Singer Futura software. I know many of you will have different softwares. So it's up to you what software you do it in. But I wanted to show you basically what I do to add the, the, the letters and the names in that I want to add in. So with my Singer Futura software, and I know obviously for many of you it will be different, I have to paste into an open design. So I go to where I've, I've got the letters that I want, and in this case I'm doing it for my husband Lee. Um, so I get the L, and I've got the grid up that shows me how to centre it, um, and I want it fairly central to the, the bottom square. Um, so that is about right for me that's where about I want it uh, so that's that and as you can see you've got your placement uh, placement line the tack down line and your uh, stitch satin stitching around the applique letter so I want to move these blocks now with mine I just highlight them all and I can just move them to where I want to now if you're going to do this you need to move it so that it's after the block that you're inserting the applique letter is after the stippling so you've got one for your placement for your main fabric, to your tack down for your main fabric. You've got your wavy line uh, placement, your wavy line tack down if you're going to put fabric up here. Then you've got your stippling, which goes all over, including the applique fabric. Then you do your applique letter placement, applique letter tack down, satin stitch for your applique letter. And then next, we want to insert the, the wording. Now, I've already done my husband's name. So in that case, I do file and paste to bring it in. Um, and I want to insert it up here. So I'm moving it up here to where I want it. And that's about where I want it for me. So I'm going to take the grid lines off now as well. So you can see a bit more clearly. Now we've got the form, the letters here. I obviously don't want them after we finish the design. So I'm going to slide them across and put them after the applique letter. So that the next thing it will stitch will be the fill designed name. Then it will satin stitch the wavy line. Um, then we have the what we would do after we stitch the wavy line. We take it from the hoop. We put the back fabric on, as you'll see, we put it back in, then we have the tack down for the back and then the satin stitch fill, which we'll do last. So there we have it. We end up with 12 blocks, uh, which you should end up with regardless. Uh, this is my five by seven size design. Um, so this is how we're going to do it. So hopefully you'll have software that you can use fairly easily where you can insert the letter and the name in that you want. Um, if not, then um, all I can suggest is that uh, you ask someone that can do it for you um, or um, do something else, put something else on, or leave it blank even. There's nothing wrong with leaving the blank. It's still quite a nice design. Um, but hopefully you can actually put details in that you want. You, you don't have to put a letter in. You can put a picture in. You can do anything you want. Um, completely put anything in that you want. Um, so that's it. So what I'm going to do now is uh, set up my hoop and come back to you when I'm ready to show you what to do. Okay, back again. Um, what I've done is I've hooped some water-soluble uh, stabiliser that's the fabric type, the woven type, not the plastic type. Um, this works fine with my mug rug. Whether it works with others, I don't know. It depends on their density, etc. But I have found that it works fine with mine. And because it's got a satin stitch, stitch edging, 
um, it's nice to, to just dissolve around the edges of it to get rid of the excess. When you use tear away, you can end up with little tiny bit, bits that stick out and you have to use a sharpie pen to hide them, etc. Um, which is fine, but I prefer to use the water soluble stabiliser. So I've got my machine ready and hooped. And now I'm just going to fold it on so that it stitches where it needs to do. And then I send the needle down to bring up the bobbin thread, as I've shown in a previous video, just to keep the underneath neat. At this point, I'm using white bobbin thread. It doesn't matter uh, at the moment. Um, so I'm just, I start by stitching off. I stop for a few and just pull the top thread just to make sure that it's not loose and doesn't cause any nesting underneath. And also, before I stitch any further, I will show you that what I've got ready. So you've got your, your hooped stabiliser, whichever you use. And then I have a piece of fabric for the top and a piece of fabric for underneath. Um, now my husband's a complete football nut, um, so I'm using a football design. Um, this is going for his computer desk. And on the back of the, the, the top piece, I've put some fusible batting, which will give me the padding for the mug rug. Now, I know people that have used a, a couple of layers of felt, um, some fleece blanket type fabric. You can use pr pretty much anything, as long as it's got a bit of padding, um, so it, it gives it a bit of substance, that's good. And obviously the thicker the padding, um, the more substance it has bearing in mind if you're going to stand say a glass on there that's got a narrow bottom if it's too padded it could topple so you don't want too much padding um, I just use a low loft fusible batting so that's the top piece because I like to use the batting, batting on the top so that when you do the stippling it gives that quilted padded effect some people put it on afterwards um, again my design is set up to have the the stippling on the batting but if you want to leave it off and add it to the back at the end that's fine you can do that um, and then I've got the pieces of applique fabric that I want. Um, now this is the piece of fabric for the top um, that I've done, um, for the top piece. Uh, now what I found was using the, the red on top of the blue, you could see through it and you could see the darkness, so it changed the colour of the red. So all I did was put a, uh, some heat and bond light onto the back of the red, then laid some white fabric onto it, um, and well sorry then peeled off then put some white fabric on and that will stop the blue coming through and it's just cheap white fabric that's all I've done and then I'll be putting some more heat and bond light on the back there which I will use to stick down onto the the mug rug you don't have to use it but it it just stops the fabric looking loose and then I've done the same for the applique letter. This is the fabric I'm using for the large applique letter. Again, it would have shown through the blue and it wouldn't have looked so nice. So I've layered, I've uh, put heat and bond light on, uh, peeled the backing off, ironed this onto it, and then I've already put some heat and bond light on. So when I peel it off, I'm ready to go, um, which will be ironed on after I've stitched it off, stitched it on and, and snipped around it, which you'll see. So there we go. So I'm I'm going to stitch the placement line um, and then I shall come back to you when that's finished. You'll want to sit there bored watching that. Okay it's finished stitching the placement line and now I need to um, put in the, the fabric um, to make sure I'm covering the, the placement line. So I'm just going to check where the batting is and happy that's covering both sides there. And it's going to the top both sides. Looks fairly straight. Um, and then just start stitching again for the tack down line. Um, I don't bother sticking it down or using temporary spray adhesive at this point. Um, it's because of the batting, I think that helps keep it quite firm in the hoop and stops it being all loose. And I just sort of hold on to it gently with my fingers, making sure they stay away from the needle, of course. Um, but I just, just make sure that the fabric is quite happy staying still. And then once we've done this line, then we have the wavy line placement uh, stitch to do, stitching to do. Um, and then the applique fabric. So that's just finishing there. Once that finishes, I'll show you I've got the heat and bond light on the back of this. I'm just going to peel that off so it's nice and shiny. 
ready to put into the hoop once I've stitched the placement line for the wavy line. At this point, if you don't want to put applique fabric in, as I said, and you want to keep to one fabric, you can. Um, but I've, I've done that so that you can put it in if you want to. So it's just finishing the wavy line. And then as that finishes, goes back to the top. I just snip and tidy that piece of fabric off. I, uh, some machines, obviously, some of your lovely machines cut as they go. Mine doesn't, so I just have to do it manually. Uh, no great shakes. Uh, so there we go. Just put that over the um, placement and stitch. Now, obviously, I haven't ironed down at this point. If I iron it down, then it's going to iron the excess fabric as well. So I don't want to be doing that. So I have to wait until I've finished, literally finished, until it's um, done. So that's that line and it's moved up ready to do the stippling. At this point, and I pressed start by accident, at this point I want to remove the hoop um, and we need, I've got my lovely gingham scissors which I absolutely adore, but we need to trim away the excess before we do the stippling. You have to trim away along the wavy line, um, otherwise it's going to stipple all over the excess and um, tack it down, which you don't want. So I'm just cutting along close to the wavy line, not, not actually on it, because obviously you want to keep your fabric tacked down, but as close as I can get to, to doing it. Um, my gingham scissors are lovely, but sometimes they can't quite get close enough for what I want. But there we have it. So, if I'd taken it out the hoop or out altogether, I'd have been better off. But obviously, I wanted to show you what I did. So I've cut along the the wavy line, returned it to the hoop, and now, if you want to use an alternate colour to the, to your fabric, do. I actually like to use as close as possible as I like as I can. Um, I like to have the same colour as the background fabric, so that's what I've done. Uh, so we've started the stippling off, and I shall come back to you when that's finished to show you what the next steps are. Um, I finished the stippling, and now we're on to the applique letter. I have actually stitched the placement line to the letter. You can't see it because it's in the same colour as the fabric. Uh, you can change colours if you want to, to make it easier for yourself. Um, and now I'm going to um, lay the applique letter, applique fabric for the letter in the hoop. It's got the heat and bond on the back. Um, so I'm just going to check that that's going to be covering. Yes, it will do easily. Um, and then I'm just going to start by stitching the placement line, sorry the tack down line. Um, now uh, what I've done is I've used the uh, blue cotton at the moment so that when I'm cutting away, trimming the fabric, I can see quite easily. Um, whereas if I'd done it in the red, I'd be a bit difficult to see. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I've actually used the applique letter is from uh, Stitchtopia and it's their Blake alphabet. Um, which is a lovely uh, applique alphabet um, and I've also used their Blake font for the fill stitch design for the name um, just in case you're thinking oh I wonder what she's used uh, there's nothing more infuriating than wondering where something's from and not being able to find out um, so that's what I've actually used but of course you can use whichever you like uh, I'm going to come back when it's finished doing the tech tack down and I've trimmed it all um, and changed the thread to a uh, a different colour so I'll be back shortly. Okay as you can see I've trimmed close to the um, tack down line I'm just going to again put my needle because I've returned uh, the hoop I've taken it out and returned it I'm just going to have to do this a few times sometimes to put my machine down needle down to bring up the bobbin thread uh, and then start stitching 
around the letter. Just stop after a few stitches. I know you probably don't have to do that with all your machines, but with my machine, she likes to be stopped and have any slack taken up in the top thread. Otherwise, she has dangers of nesting underneath or looping on top. So, she's gonna stitch now all the way round in satin stitch. She's just gonna do this stitching first, then she'll go round again and do the satin, satin stitch. And then it will come to the fill name in the fill embroidery design. So I'll, I'm going to change back to the blue thread for that. Um, so when this is finished, I'm going to change to the blue thread, stitch out the name, and then I shall come back to you after that. So I shall see you soon. Okay, so I went ahead and stitched the next couple of blocks. I did the, um, turn it around that way. I did the applique letter, which if I turned it the right way up, that would help, wouldn't it? So I did the applique letter. Then I did the fill stitch name. And then I stitched the um, wavy line, which you can stitch in whichever color you'd like. Um, I'm doing a blue surround. And I thought to tie in with the red applique letter, I'd do the red line as well. Uh, what I've done is removed it from the hoop after it's done the, the name and the wavy line. Um, so before I stitch block 11, so finished block 10, I removed it from the hoop and I've turned it around and I've put a bit of um, 505 spray adhesive. I particularly like 505, but obviously you use what you want. You can use masking tape to stick along the edges if you wish to. Um, but I've just done that with the back fabric and return it to the hoop. And then I'm going to do the tack down line for the uh, outer edge. So I'll do a few lines, a few stitches, then just again pull the top thread just to make sure. Your machine might not need that. So as I said earlier, mine does. I'll snip off the loose end of the thread and carry on. So I'm going to stitch around the outer edge, uh, just the placement line, a tack line, tack down line, sorry. And then when I've done that, I'm going to remove it and I'm going to trim the edges on top and underneath and put it back to the hoop. I have also at this point changed the bobbin thread to the same color as the, uh, the, the satin stitch edging that I'm going to be doing. Um, so I will come back to you when it's finished stitching and I've trimmed the outer edges. Okay, so I've trimmed it underneath and on top and I'm going to start stitching the outer edge. Um, it will do a running stitch to start with, just slow that down a little bit, and then it's going to do the satin stitching. Um, and when it's done that, I'll come back to you and um, show you the end result. Uh, so that's as easy as it gets so I'm sure you can all do it um, uh, people think it's difficult and it really isn't so give it a go and hopefully you'll enjoy it um, I hope you have found it nice and clear uh, to understand anyway I'll be back shortly okay so that's finished let's snip that thread and then remove from the hoop uh, sorry, remove from the machine. Excuse me, getting my arm in the way. Um, so just snip the back of the thread. And there we have it. And it's in the hoop, as you can see. I'm just going to move the camera back a little bit. And then I'm just keeping it in the hoop because it keeps it nice and tight. Just going to run around with my scissors like this. I try not to do the scissor action, so then I'd have no danger of cutting the um, satin stitching around the edging. Um, do it nicely, and just this last bit. And there we have it, my mug rug. I shall iron it before I do anything else to sort of get the heat and bond to stick to the under fabric so I shall iron these before I go any further and then I shall use some hot water and a sponge just to go around the edges just to get rid of the tiny excesses of the water soluble stabilizer 
this is what I mean you can end up with with the tear away um, so using water soluble just makes a, a big difference to the end result so it's worth using um, so yes I'm just going to do that and then I shall be posting the picture and the tutorial online so it's easy peasy lemon squeezy and I hope to see yours uh, in the group um, my Facebook group in the hoop mug rug addicts when you've done yours thanks for watching bye